Hey everyone, today we're looking at the energy stored in electric fields, or remember those electric fields are set up between parallel plates that are charged, so the energy stored in capacitors. Remember that in order to charge plates, something has to do work and push charges and transfer charge from one plate to the next. Batteries, you can think of as pumps, they will do work until the potential difference across the plates is equal to that of the battery. When I hook up a capacitor to a potential difference or a potential source like the battery eliminators we use in lab or we have an actual battery, you can see there is a carbon rod that goes down the middle, there's an electrolyte paste on the inside, and there's some zinc. The chemical reaction between the zinc and the electrolyte paste creates a potential difference. It piles up charges at one end of the battery leaving one end of the battery positive and one end of the battery negative. So the positive terminal would have lost all of its electrons and the negative terminal would have gained all of its electrons. So you can think of batteries or power sources as charge pumps or charge escalators. We have charges on both sides and I can click on show battery and it gives you a battery. And if I want to create a potential difference, these little guys are going to have to do some work for me. So let's create a potential difference here. You can see that if I want to create a voltage and have a large potential difference, these little guys are running over, grabbing electrons, pushing them to the negative side of the battery. And look at this last guy. He's really struggling to push that last charge over to the negative terminal of the battery because there's so many electrons over there. Electrons don't want to be next to each other, so it takes a lot of effort and a lot of energy to set up that potential difference. But now we've got a positive end of the battery and a negative end of the battery. That means we've got an electric field and charges will flow from high potential to low potential if you give it the chance to get there. If I had two parallel plates and I connected the parallel plates to a battery to the positive end and the negative end, what will happen is those little guys will do even more work. They'll set up the potential difference and pump electrons onto this plate. When they pump electrons onto one plate, the positives in the second plate will see those negatives and try to go towards them, and all the electrons on this second plate will run back through the battery and pile up on the back end. Charge separation will happen, let's say that this was a three volt battery, until the potential difference in the setup between the plates on the capacitor is also 3 volts. So if you look at the batteries at 3 volts, the capacitors at 3 volts, there's no reason for charges to move anymore. Both have heat their same potential level. So just like the water, water will flow until it reaches its same level of potential. Same thing here with the battery. Basically, the battery is your pump. It's going to pump water into the capacitor and it's going to do it until the capacitor is at the same exact potential level as the battery. So since it takes work to do that, let's set up an, a formula to show you how the work changes as we move each charge from one plate to the other. Remember the work gets harder and harder so we can't just do a simple force times displacement because it's going to be harder to push the last charge from one plate to the next than it was for that first charge. So here we are in the beginning. We've got neutral plates. Again, we're going to use a charge pump or a battery to move charges from one plate to the next. And when I've done that, the plate on the left becomes more positive. The plate on the right gets a little bit more negative. And that means we have an electric field that sets up between the two plates. So when I go to take my next charge, and I try to take the next charge and push it from one plate to the next, I'm fighting the field. And as I fight the field, you're going to pour more energy into that system into that electric field. So since you fight the field, potential energy increases, and if your potential energy increases, that means there's a greater potential difference. So the voltage goes up as well. Remember, work is our change in potential energy. Potential energy, as related to voltage, energy per charge was our definition of a volt. So if I want to solve for du, I could just do Q dot dv, or the work done against the field. Remember dv here, if we think of moving each individual charge from one plate to the next, dv could simply be k dq over r. r would be the distance the charge had to move, so that would be the distance the plates are separated. 
K is a Coulomb constant, and you can see the only thing that's going to change is how much charge I move from one plate to the next. So here's our setup here. Pull out the K and the R. We have Q, DQ, and I'm going to do that from no charge on the two plates to all of the charge on the two plates. When I do that, I get, I get K over R, Q squared over 2. When I stretch this out a little bit, I can write KQ over R times Q over 2. That gives me the same exact formula. And remember, KQ over R is voltage. So another way to write the energy in our capacitor here is going to be 1 half Q multiplied by V. So the energy it takes me to move a charge from one plate to the next is half the amount of charge times the potential difference that's set up between those two plates. So that is the electric potential energy stored in a capacitor. But remember, we know the ratio of charge per volt. We know the capacitance of any device we create is just the ratio of how many charges you can put on per unit volt. So since I know this, what you can do is if you don't know the charge on a capacitor, we could sub out Q using our capacitance ratio. So if I want to solve for Q and put Q in here, I can get 1 half CV times V, or an easier way to write that is 1 half CV squared. I could know the capacitance of my capacitor and the voltage that I charge it to, and that also would give me the amount of energy stored in the capacitor. Well, what if you didn't know the voltage, but you knew the charge? Well, we could come back here and put in what V is. And if I put in what V is into that equation, what comes out is 1 half Q times Q over C. That solves for voltage. Or another way of writing that is Q squared over C. So I've got three ways to solve for the energy in a capacitor. I do 1 half QV, 1 half CV squared, or 1 half Q squared over C. Go ahead, put the units for all three of those, and you should get that all these units add up to joules in the end. So that's the energy that's stored in a capacitor. But they may ask you is how much work did the battery do? The work done by the battery would be QV, the amount of charge that it passes through times the voltage of the potential source. And if you see, this is the work done by the battery, and here's the energy that's stored in the capacitor. The energy in the capacitor is half of the work done by the battery. Why is that? Well, since it takes more and more work to try and push charges from high to low, once you start setting up that electric field, some of the energy is lost due to internal heating. Heating of the wires or just movement through your circuit. The energy in a capacitor are these three setups here. But if someone asks you what the battery is doing, the battery is doing the work of QV. I've got two scenarios here for you when you're connected to a battery and when you're disconnected from a battery. And I want you to be able to explain what happens in either of those scenarios. Scenario one is when you are connected to a battery. Remember the capacitance is just depending on the geometry of your capacitor. If we just talk parallel plates, it's the area over distance ratio that gives us our capacitance. The voltage, the voltage is nice. The voltage reading will be whatever your battery or potential difference is. And Q is just the amount of charge that you can get on a plate. So let's see what happens when you're connected to a battery and we start to alter a few of these variables. So look at this setup here. We've got a battery, we've got a capacitor, two parallel plates, and right now we are not connect we have no potential difference. Since we know the capacitance, because we could measure the area, the distances, and solve for C, we would know the voltage by however many batteries we connect to our capacitor. We can find the charge by C times V. That would be something we can easily do. Now, what we could do if we had movable capacitors here is we could charge up the capacitor. And you can see in the top up, upper right hand corner there, we have got some stored energy in the capacitor. You can see the top plate became positively charged while all the electrons were pumped off it and pushed towards the negative plate. So there's an electric field that's set up between those. And you can see the electric field lines are nice and uniform. What I want to do is see if I can change the capacitance. Well, there's two ways to change the capacitance. Change the area, or I can change the separation distance. And watch what happens when I change the separation distance. When I bring those two plates closer together, it looks like there's now more charges on it. Well, how can that be? Well, 
when I bring the two plates closer, all the positives and negatives kind of bunch up and notice each other a little bit more and try to get closer and closer to each other, which leaves more room behind those charges to pile on more charges. So what's really happening is if the, if the distance between the capacitors or the plates are decreasing, that means the capacitance is increasing. I can pack more and more charges on there. And based off of the definition of capacitance, since I'm connected to a battery, the voltage is still one and a half volts. So this voltage is not changing. The capacitance is increasing, so I can increase the amount of charge on the plates. And if you look over at the upper right hand corner again, the stored energy in the capacitor looks like it has gone up. Let's pull out one of the energy equations. Pick any one you want. I'm just gonna go with one half CV squared. With one half CV squared, remember the voltage is constant. So this cannot change, but the capacitance just increased. And if the capacitance increased, the amount of energy in my capacitor increased. Because I packed more charges on there, I was able to find more room by bringing two plates together. So now let's look at the scenario as disconnecting our battery. And what happens here? Well, when we disconnect the battery, we no longer have a way to keep a constant voltage. The one thing that can't change this time is there's no way for a charge to move from one plate to the next. Charges are kind of stuck in their locations and they can't move. In terms of this time, charge is held constant. And if charge is held constant and I change distances or capacitance, what can be affected now is the voltage between the two plates. Let's see what we could do in this scenario. Remember, capacitance depends on area, epsilon zero over distance. Let's make the distance increase this time. If we increase the distance between the two plates, that's gonna decrease our capacitance. So capacitance will drop. The charge can't change because there's no way for them to move from high to low. So that means the voltage needs to respond. And if capacitance drops, the voltage has to go up. So what does that mean between my energy? Well, remember energy is one half CV squared or you could pick any of the other equations that you want, I see a decrease in capacitance. So that should mean a decrease in energy. However, we have an increase in volts and the voltage is squared. So the squared increase is gonna be more than the capacitance decrease. So we're actually gonna increase the amount of energy here. So watch what happens when I move the plates apart. The energy jumps way, way up on our bar graph here. Now why is that the case? Well, the electric field lines now are being pulled further apart. So when I'm pulling the electric field lines further apart, I'm doing work against the field. So if I'm doing work against the field, I am actually pouring energy from me into the electric field and into the capacitor. If you charged up two plates, disconnected them from a battery, and then pulled those two plates further apart, you would see a really, really big discharge in energy, just like we saw in class today when we took the capacitor and arced from high to low. This question was brought up in our discussions today about why we even use capacitors. Well, in your keyboards, there are capacitors. When you push down the K button here, that plate moves closer to a fixed plate. The plates are charged, so when you are decreasing the distance, you are increasing the capacitance, and that's going to affect the charge or the voltage on those two plates. And when you do that, the computer senses either a discharge in energy or an, a need for more energy when you push down the K button since it will respond to that location and know that there's energy needed at that particular parallel plate setup, it knows that K has been depressed or the space bar or whatever bar or button you click on your computer. So the last thing here is something we call energy density and that is the energy per unit volume in the electric field. Since capacitors store energy in the fields, just like when I lift a mass in the air, I'm actually storing energy in the gravitational field 
we can solve for how much energy we get per unit volume. So remember that energy in the capacitor is one half CV squared. Don't forget that capacitance depends on area and distance. And since we're talking about voltage, say between two parallel plates, that voltage is electric field times displacement. I do have to square that. So if I do that and I see if anything can cancel out here, electric field is going to be squared and so is distance. So something that can cross out here is one of the distances on the top and bottom. So if I kind of pull some things out of here, what's left behind is one half the electric field squared times epsilon zero multiplied by A times D. A being the area of the plates and D being the separation distance. Well, if you think about it, area is in meters squared and D is in just meters. So what I actually get here is cubic meters. And cubic meters means that this right here is a volume. So since we have energy and we want to know the energy density, energy per volume, I can divide the volume over and the energy per unit volume inside an electric field is E squared epsilon zero times one half. Energy density inside electric fields because of capacitors is equal to one half the electric field strength times epsilon zero. You don't need anything to know anything except how strong the field is between the two plates. And that'll tell you how many joules you get per unit volume. Come back to these scenarios here. Know what happens when you connect or disconnect a battery and move the capacitor plates around. You're gonna affect the capacitance and when you change the capacitance, either the charge or the voltage will change depending on if you're connected to a battery or disconnected to a battery.